Okay, so I've been asked to go through some of the basics of doing wire joints, line joints and thimble joints. <clears throat> thimble that goes on the end of uh, the signal, weight arm, etc, etc. You may get them to start with like this, um, kind of a U-shape with a bit of a channel in it. The wire sits in that channel. Um, what you tend to find is you might need to get the link out of this and it can't come out without splitting it. So if you have to do that, using your chisel, your cold chisel, put your cold chisel in there, put your cold chisel on the flat and gently tap down with a hammer on top of this to separate it and open it. Once you've done that, you can put it on the end of the chisel and slowly drive it down very gently without damaging this part here until you've opened it enough to get your, get your bits out. Uh, we found a lot of these we've had to recover and we've had to do that to get the eyelet open. When you go to close the eyelet back up again, best thing you can do is put it in a vise and gently close it at the end. Remember, you don't want to damage this bit here because this will snap. Um, close it up as tight as you can, but try and keep these sides symmetrical. There's an important reason for that because we want that wire trapped underneath it. That's closed up quite nicely. Piece of standard signaling wire. Um, there are various different pieces of this. The older stuff was a lot softer. You could work with it easy. You could snap it with your hands dead easy. Um, I struggle to snap it and I have eczema, so I will not be snapping this with my fingers. I can promise you that because it damages my fingers. I get split skin and I'm not having that. I do use pliers. That's how I do it. And I know people will say, no, you shouldn't do that. You damage the wire. When you've cut the wire, you've opened the end. That piece isn't galvanized anyway. This is wire that should last about 10 to 15 years, so it should be good anyway. And like I mentioned, I have cut my hands open before now, and I'm not doing that with eczema, so I will use a pair of pliers for this demonstration. Seven strands, all twisted, except for the last one. The last one is dead straight. You see that slight twist on there? So what we will do to start with, we're going to get about a foot and a half of this. I'm going to go, just get our place here. I'm going to give myself... You, know what, you don't give yourself too little, that's too little, because by the time you've come back round, you're not going to have enough to do all your wraps. Just give yourself about a foot and a half, we've got plenty. I'm just going to put a kink in it there, just going to bend it round on itself, just to get this in. Now, it's going to be a nightmare to get it all the way up to the end, but I'll show you a little trick. Roughly at the end there, bend this piece outwards, make it make the same. Okay, I call this the monster's ink because it's like the lady with the snake hair. All the snakes just bend outwards and such. So when you push this together, this will come together around that thimble. There, you see? Now, ideally, you want that as tight as you can into there. I'm not gonna get it that tight because I haven't got a lot of pull on this at all. If you've got a little piece of wire, you can wrap that around there. I have a set of the old lines and nutcracker tools which I used to put across there at one time. And then you tie the other end up round on itself and it holds it together. You can even do the wraps with this, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I am just gonna do this by hand and try and get the first one as neat as I can. The first one will always be a slight bit messy what happens is it tries to pull in on itself. Now, if you notice very carefully, remember I mentioned this little bit of a kind of channel in here. You want to try and get that wire into that channel there. Okay, so it sits under that channel. All right, the first one, I'm trying to keep it as tight as I can. I'm just going to pull it off camera for a second while I get this first wrap because it's quite a large bit of wire. And I don't want it to go all over the place. Little trick I've done there, I've just got the end of my wire spun it round on itself and it'll hold that together freeze your hand up just while you try and get this first one in now i've made that a little bit too long so i'm going to make this a lot easier for the camera wrap that back up again it's really springy the wire so you will struggle if you haven't done one before or in a while you've got to try and keep the first one as tight as you can now, I do finger over thumb, which is my method. And pull it as tight as you can on the first few wraps. Two, three, four. I'm going to do five just to show you. There should be seven wraps, the seven strands. So you do seven wraps. As I mentioned, I choose to use a pair of pliers because of my hands. That's my choice. I prefer them. I actually get a meter end. So that's my first one. 
There's a little bit of a gap there. This will pull in as the signal wire gets tight. So you want to make sure this is as close up to there as possible. So when this pulls in, there'll be a gap here and you don't want that gap too big because it will pull off um, the piece of wire if you haven't got it trapped under there. That's not actually too bad. So I'll start on my second one. I'll get a couple of wraps done. Then I'll take you straight to the last one. They untweed very easily. What you want to make sure is that you get it all the way right down to the very end there. You don't want you don't want to get the wrong one. And when you get it down to the very end, pull it as tight as you can, 90 degrees. Okay? That ensures that it's trapped up against there, it's nice and tight. This one should go a lot better. Now I've got the first wrap on. So I'm keeping it as close as I can, anchoring my finger while I get in position again, pulling it as tight as I can, pulling it as tight as I can. And as you work your way down, they get tighter and tighter and smaller and smaller. And they should eventually get quite neat. There's that little strand at the end for me. That's why I took it around. You should be able to run your hand over it without causing much problem. So what I'll do, I'll do the rest of these joints and then uh, we'll get to the last wire and I'll show you what it looks like. So we've done six of the wraps now. We're down to the last wrap. And as you can see, this is the straighter one that I mentioned. It's slightly bigger, slightly straighter. If I show you, uh, this is one of the normal strands. You can see it's got the twist in it. And this is the center core, which is a straight one. When they make this wire, this will be the first strand that's in there, so it's obviously dead straight, and the other ones will wrap around it. Um, as I mentioned, this wire is newer wire. It's quite flexible, and it stays in position. Some of it's quite easy. This is quite hard to snap with hands, um, but it does keep a nice bend on it when you're doing it. So we're down to this last wire now. This is roughly about a foot in length, and that tends to be about the right length for doing what you want. So as, as I mentioned with the other wraps, um, first thing you do, pull it tight at its 90 degree. So it's nice and tight up against there. And then finger and thumb. I'm just gonna chop that down just to show you so I can get it on camera. Finger and thumb. Just get that last nice anchor wrap tied all the way around there. So it's quite neat, this last one now. The more you do, the neater it gets because you tend to get that action in your fingers that it's just an instinct to know how to wrap them, it's like a coil. If you keep it nice and tight, you will end up with a nice, neat wrap at the end. That's quite nice, like a clothes peg. Once you've done about 50 of these in a day, your hands hurt. So that's not too bad. It's neater than my first attempt. Um, and it gets neater as you go on. And that's quite a strong wrap as well. It's a very nice one, that is. Um, Something to be wary of is obviously the, the type of wire. The older wire is more flexible. You can snap it easy. The newer wire is quite springy. Um, also, some of this, there was a batch made with the wrap the wrong way round. Uh, so it did actually weaken and stretch. So just be careful that hasn't ended up in your stores. Uh, and get the first wrap underneath that edge there of your link. And as you pull on this wire, it should self-tighten. It'll just tighten itself up more and more. So that's a thimble joint. Now we're on to a line wire. And there's a couple of things that can happen here. The line wire rusts away where it's been rubbing on something. Um, platform edges are a, a classic example. Platform staff throw salt over and it eventually just rusts the wires as the wires run along the platform edge. Um, in which case you will need to change a few meters of it maybe. Or the wire snaps something's caught it and it's snapped uh, maybe a strimmer say for example one thing you're not going to be able to do is just put this back together like this um, you might be able to say take a foot that way and a foot that way join them here in the middle do the wraps on this end and do the wraps on that end or it may be that you know you put a piece of wire in it's two meters three meters long to get around a problem um, and you do the wraps at this end and that one and then three meters down the line, you do the same again with another piece of wire. So you've got two sets of wraps to go there as well. It just depends on the circumstances. One thing to bear in mind is you do not want this joint within a few feet of your pulleys. Because consider this, 
by the time you've taken this a foot that way to do your joint, maybe two feet that way to do your joint, and then in winter, the signaler adjusts it on their adjuster or you adjust it under the box, and then it goes another two feet, you're now getting very close to your pulley stake when he clears it and you probably end up jamming the pulley stake. So a faux pas that a lot of people make is they just do a joint and they don't consider letting the wire out to start with. Go to the signal box, slacking it off, um, either on the adjuster that the signaler has or downstairs on the, the chain, take it off a foot because once you've done this wire, it will never be as tight as the day it started and you will have to tighten it up. And you know this has happened, two things that give it away. The first is you go outside and all your chain is pulled around your wheels and the wire is now into your wheel. So you know you, you didn't left slacking it off to start with. And the second thing is when the signaler first pulls it, the signal doesn't come off. So you go and tighten it up and it still doesn't come off. So you go and tighten it up again and then it starts to come off. By now you've adjusted it a few feet and you're wondering why you've taken so much slack up. It's because you didn't let it out to start with. Let it out, tighten your joint up, then you can do your adjustments afterwards. So don't forget, let it off at the box first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you a simple joint just in one piece of wire. So again, we take our strand, the twisted one, not the straight one, that's the last one, the straight one. We're gonna go back about a foot, say, just there. And what I'm gonna do, holding my wires together, I'm gonna to take the piece that I've just pulled off make a nice 90 degree bend in it. Now, this is quite close to the camera, so I'm just gonna wrap this round, just off camera, just to get it in place. It's easier when either your colleague is helping you or it's somehow anchored to prevent that problem from happening. So I've just made a few wraps there, as you can see. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut that. Just tie that back nice and neat there. So now I'm gonna get the opposite piece of wire. I'm going to take a twisted strand off that. When you're untwisting these, they're, they're a bit of an awkward sausage to start with, but once you've got it off, it's fine. Take it all the way back, all the way back to your joint, right? Don't, don't start doing it here, because that just won't work. Take it all the way back to your joint. And pull it as tight as you can, okay? So I'm gonna do it again. So I'll just do this one off camera for you just so I can show you again. Five, six, seven. I'll just cut that, make it nice and neat. So it's our first two, a little bit of a gap there. These will pull tight together. So you want to try and keep them as tight as you can. And you continue. So you continue with all of these and you continue with all of these until you get to the last strand. Um, once you've got about two, two or three of these on each side, it is hard, um, hard enough to be able to pull the signal off. Um, but it needs that those few to bite into each other. And then obviously, your other end of your signal wire, if you've done another joint down there, you will do the same process there. I'm just going to finish this one off, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So we've done our line joint there. This is just one of the joints. There'll be another one up here where we've joined the other piece of the wire together. As you can see, I managed to do a fairly small joint there, only a few inches, about four inches wide. Um, normally, that would be about six inches wide. You want about a foot of spare wire to be able to do the wraps properly. I've managed about four or five wraps on there just to demonstrate this to you. And it was getting quite hard at the end because I was running out of wire to be able to do the wraps with. Uh, ironically, the very last one is the neatest one of all. Typical that, isn't it? But that's the kind of close, you want them as close together as possible. If you don't keep them as close together as possible, this happens and you start to get them coming out. Um, again, it's a tight joint, but obviously that's not neat that at all. Whereas the other side actually went neater at the end. Uh, so keep as close as you can, otherwise you'll start to get them bubbling up like this. And also give yourself plenty when you're doing the wraps. Uh, otherwise you'll end up bubbling up as well. Uh, if you keep them nice and, clean, uh, nice and tight and clean and really close, as you're doing the, the wraps around, I, I say finger to thumb. So my hand is anchoring this side and as I'm pulling the wire off I'm using my thumb to take it round, hold it with my finger, get it again, pull it tight, thumb round. So you're not pulling a massive big piece of wire off up here 
like this and trying to do it out here because that will just wrap quite loose. Keep it as tight as you can. So here we go. I've just done all of the wraps on one end. Uh, again, if you had a second wire, you know, or you change a few meters of this, the other end of this would be done the same. Something to bear in mind here, um, when you pull these wires together, you want to overlap them, as I say, one to two feet. It gives yourself about one foot to do your wrap either end, um, and also gives you a bit of slack, because you need that bit of wire to work with. But just be careful, you will need to pull them tight. So if you've got a colleague with you, your colleague can pull them tight. Uh, a little known fact that not many people do know is that your pulley wheels, your on your stakes, the, the, the wheels that these thread through, uh, you may notice the gap above them is double height. And there's a reason for that. As this wire is already through the pulley stake, you can actually run the new wire through the same hole on it without having to take the wheels off. Uh, and then you can do a joint while it's there, do a joint the other end, um, then snip it. Now you can quickly just have two joints to do um, instead of having to do the four. Because remember, this is one end. I have to wrap one side and the other. And then further down, where I've replaced the other end of the wire, there's two more wraps there. So if I've already got my new piece of wire pulled through my wheels, I can wrap one end and I can start wrapping the other. Um, the only reason I found out about that is on a very old signaling video. Um, again, the middle... It's not as neat as the end. The end is a lot neater. I finally got neater at the ends. Um, you find that a lot. Um, but that is a strong joint and it will hold itself together. Um, though it could be a bit neater. But that's just to show you how to do uh, two line wires and to do a thimble joint um, as we've shown earlier on this one. So that should give you the basics of doing signal wires. As I say, the new wire is quite springy. I struggle with it. I do cut my hands. Uh, you probably wonder why don't I wear gloves? I don't wear gloves for two reasons. The gloves actually get caught up when you're doing the unwrapping and they just get caught in it. If the rubber gloves, they get torn and that in the end, you just end up throwing the things away. And secondly, I like to have a feel of the wire that I'm working with. Uh, the way I work, I keep it very close to my fingers and thumb. So I like to have a feel of that. Uh, you can't do that with big dobbing gloves. It doesn't work at all. So hopefully that's been of use to you. Um, if I can add any more to that, I would say, first thing, don't forget, let out the slack to start with before you start jointing anything. And also your cranks, make sure your cranks are on action. Uh, so they're halfway rather than just joint this on because the first thing that will happen is come winter, your crank will be jamming. And then you'll think, why didn't I let that out to start with? So don't forget, slacking off to start with. Thank you very much.